right, good morning, seventh graders. Um, happy Thursday. It is sunny out and everything is great so far. So, before we begin, you've had a chance to look at this. My class, you've had a chance to look at this for quite a long time. Um, before we begin, I need everyone to find their, like it said in red, it says in red, your social studies notebook. And Mrs. Hughes um, had a great question for me and maybe we should cover that right now. We're good? Thanks, Jackie. Um, that I yesterday when you were at home, uh, this should have come across the wire. It is a map for today. This is the map that I wanted you to open. Um, so let's do this right now. Let's look, let's have this ready with the best pencil in the world or pen and find, oh, you may open up your Chromebooks, find this, open up the link, and when you do, that should appear. You can click on OK if they talk about cookies. Okay. So, here, to here. This is what you'll need for geography review about halfway through the lesson today halfway through the instruction. Uh, my students, who found this map? Did it work? Awesome. Okay. So just when you are ready and you have this up, uh, Chromebook should be closed. Close your Chromebooks, please. Okay, we need few distractions for a little while. So if you're late to the game, okay, um, find this, open up the map, and it'll turn into that. Okay, so I'll begin when all of you in my class have your Chromebooks closed. That'll be like my little measuring stick. Okay, awesome. And five seconds for here. Three, two, groovy. All right, yesterday was Veterans Day. We discussed a little bit of it on uh, Tuesday. Hopefully you had a chance to um, discuss some of these things at home, uh, check on some of the events of the day at home. Um, I wanted to share a couple things with you. So, I'm sorry, right here. Um, I am an avid newspaper reader, and in yesterday's paper, um, there's a thing called an editorial page where people can write in their opinions. Okay, freedom of the press. Um, and this right here uh, was written um, by a veteran. His name is Milt Dean. His name is Milt Dean. Uh, about once a month, he writes a really good editorial, and Milt happens to be a Vietnam War veteran. Okay, my dad is a Vietnam War veteran. I read um, this, and um, there were so many good points to it. I'm not going to read it to you, but I just wanted you to know that um, the newspaper is a great source to um, not only gather relevant information, but also read very, um, very interesting opinion. Okay, this one was tied into Veterans Day. Um, the theme of this is he's basically recognizing the men that he served with in Vietnam, um, the ones who are not living right now. He's honoring them by writing this. Okay, so um, the other thing that I saw on the paper, on the same page, was this um, drawing. On Veterans Days, the stars are unanimous. Okay, you know, it's, they say we're a divided country because of politics and because of a lot of things going on. Well, I guess on Veterans Day, um, we come together as one. The other one I wanted to show you um, was this one. This was another commentary. Wisconsin veterans, an example of courage, um, her, 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 heroism, and in difficult times. Okay? Um, and the theme of this is just basically, um, uh, it's covering a couple wars, a couple of the, uh, the wars this century, and recognizing the contributions of all veterans, whether or not they... Um, took part in the uh, military battles or the, the battles of the war or not. Okay, and a couple images from yesterday. Here's President Trump. Um, this is a, uh, a tradition on Veterans Day, Memorial Day, that he uh, goes to Arlington Cemetery and um, watches the, the ceremony related to honoring um, the unknown soldiers who are in this tomb. And um, in January and February, I will do, we're going to be doing a unit about 
what this symbolizes and what um, is actually inside that tomb um, and the history of that tomb. But here's President Trump. Um, here's some of the honor guard who take part in the ceremony. Okay, so another photo um, right here. This is the um, image of the cemetery. Uh, that, I believe that's an enlisted uh, military person who's walking through the cemetery. There are thousands and thousands of grave markers just like this in, at the Arlington Cemetery. It's a national cemetery. And then there's this one. Um, this one is near and dear to my heart because I've been to this location. This is the Vietnam um, War Memorial. You only see a little bit part of this. It's carved, it's built into the side of a hill. Okay, As you can see, they're on top of the hill. And these um, individuals down here, some could be veterans are below that hill. This wall here, this is only one tiny section of it. It goes on for a great distance and it tapers. This is the high point. The low point would be very far to the left, very far to the right. There are 50,000, 58, over 58,000 names on this wall. Okay, anyone know why those names are on that wall in my class? Okay, think about it, it was a war Okay, this is um, a memorial. Yes. Yes, these are all the enlisted soldiers who died um, as a result of the uh, of this war. So over 58,000 names on there. And they are still adding names to it because they are discovering after all these years, um, if you were missing in action, okay, and your body was not officially found, um, if they do find through science, and through um, cooperation with the Vietnamese government, your name gets put on there, okay, if, if they discover that you actually did die during the war. So if you ever get a chance to go to the Vietnam um, War Memorial in Washington, D.C., I highly recommend it. It's so incredibly moving and emotional. So, um, but for all the right reasons, okay, for all the good reasons. All right, so moving on. Uh, Kahoot update. Uh, we had 17 students yesterday during their time at home, or maybe this morning, okay, take part in the Kahoot for the Trail of Tears. Anyone from my class see their names up there? Okay, if you're in a different classroom and you do see your name on there, um, you might want to check in with check on the, check in on this on a regular basis because the contest does close um, tomorrow at noon, okay? So, I would really, really like this number to grow from 17, okay? I think it's probably, let's, let's see if we can hit 50. 50 people doing this throughout today and tomorrow closes at noon. All right, uh, before we get to um, the assignments today, um, I need everyone to find their notebook, okay? Uh, you got your notebook? And I would like you to copy down these things, okay? What you see, what you see is exactly Okay, the way it should be written. So for example, for example, okay, let's put geography on top, the date underneath it, space out one, two, and three. Okay. Any questions from my class? If you can see this, you have okay. Yes, Mr. Pele. You can. You can do the same sheet as yesterday, but let's make sure you date things. Um, because there's times I want to refer back to I want to refer back to these things and I will say go back to November twelfth, go back to November tenth. Which direction would you go to travel? From from Africa to Europe? And the sea that lies between Europe and Africa. The intersection is equator and the prime meridian is where. Please do not begin. Just copy these down. And 
please, my class, if you don't understand one of these, the words are confusing, the directions are confusing, please let me know. Give yourself space to write the answer. We will be doing answers today. Mondays and Thursdays will always be geography review days. For Equator and Prime Meridian, some websites tell me to capitalize it, some tell me to not capitalize it. So, your choice on that. I wanted to capitalize it, but you know. about one minute to get these copied down. You'll see them again. Teachers can pause. Don't forget your question marks. Question mark on number one. The reason I underlined from a number one is you're going to be starting in Africa. From Africa. Okay, don't start yet. Don't start yet. I see some people popping open their Chromebooks, so please be patient. I know. It's difficult sometimes. All right, so actually, two of these have question marks. I'm sorry. All right, so students, um, I copied it down. Students, just like that, make sure you leave space for your answers. Okay, so uh, for five minutes now, um, or less, I need you to go to use this map. Okay, hopefully you can zoom in on it. Um, any questions? You need only this map. Please do not Google these answers or these questions, okay? That's a lot of work when all the answers are right in here. So five minutes, we will come back, and um, good luck. Two minutes. Two minutes.
About 10 seconds, 10 seconds. So students, if you are done, you may officially close your Chromebook. That way there's no distractions, okay? All right, thank you, and all right. Which direction would you go to travel from Africa to Europe? Who in my class can give me the answer? Okay, and then you'll get a chance to see the answer. Henry Ford, what do you got? Okay, we have north on that one, okay? Name the sea that lies between Europe and Africa. Why am I? J.K. Rowling. Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea. Cut out. And number three, there are two choices for this one. Can someone give me the answer for that one? Pele. Gulf of Guinea. Gulf of Guinea is one choice. And what is the other one? Gulf of Guinea is a gulf in which ocean? What do you think? What do you think? Yes, you are correct. The Atlantic Ocean. So everyone? Quick review, you heard North for number one, and you heard Mediterranean Sea for number two, but for number three, you've got two choices, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Guinea, that's where zero meets zero, okay? So, make sure you get these down. Um, quick note about these, you get to use this on a test or a quiz, so I hope you are taking good notes. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a few moments because I know you want to spell it correctly. Spelling is so important in many subjects, including social studies. All right. So, if you need more time, please ask your teachers to pause. Uh, we're going to go on to uh, back to step one on research. Okay. This I showed to you on Tuesday. This was a good example of someone's work for step one, okay, for these inquiries, all right? Here's why, the answer and the source, the answer and the source. Okay, yesterday I pulled up someone from Mrs. Panka's class, okay, copy and pasted that girl's answers for this one, okay? We have a trail of tears, Military branches, Great Lakes, um, the state dances, and the explore one. Okay, another good way to take notes: color coded the answers, color coded the resource. Okay, um, and I don't believe I even edited this one. Okay, so I'm going to do this one as an example right here. Number three. Here are the answers: Superior, Erie, Huron. Okay. Um, this person actually needs one more answer on here. But anyway, three out of four correct so far. Eventually, you're going to be writing a paragraph about this. A paragraph about this. Okay. So, everyone, this was due yesterday. This was due Tuesday. So, you should be ahead of the game so far or on track to finishing this because we are starting step three today. Okay. So step three has five inquiries or research assignments. Um, I need someone from my class to read number one. Please. Please. J.K. Rowling. What are the three branches of the U.S. government? What are the three branches of the U.S. government? Okay, there are three. That theme is government. I'll read number two. Name one food export the U.S. sends to Japan. The key word is to. An export leave. It exits. It exits the country. Name one food export the U.S. sends to Japan. There's a bunch of them. You only have to name one. Okay. Number three, Pele. Can you read that one first? Or do you have a question? Yes, please. Okay. So this is food that we get from other countries. Okay. So export, import. Those are both economics, econ related to econ economics themes. Okay. Number four, I will read this one. This one's probably the fun one today. Ooh, but aren't they all fun, Mr. Kunski? Okay, what is the official bird of the United States? Why was this bird selected as the official bird of the United States? When was this bird officially recognized as the official bird of the United States? History. Okay. 
And number five. Can someone please read that one for us? You've seen this painting before. When you look at this, look at this one. Okay, let's go with uh, Jackie Orms. Okay, I'll give you a hint. That museum is not too far from here. Not too far from here. Okay, so uh, back to these. Please remember, you are giving the answers. You are citing your source. This one may be the, these two may be the most challenging ones, okay, because you're going to have to really read some data tables on these as well. Any questions? Remember, you're turning this into a final product project. Okay, so when you get, um, after your, te by the way, when I sign off, your teachers are showing you this. I sent a link to them. There's no quiz for this, okay. If you want to send me the your test results um, I will give you extra credit points just like I did the other day but there's no required quiz for this one your teachers are going to show this to you okay it does show the branches of the military but remember there may be more to that because this video could be not up to date so after your teachers show this to you okay these are the things that need to get done in work time during work time today steps one and two of the research Step three, which is today, okay? Any questions? Did anyone start early in here? Because I put it on, I put it in yesterday. Nope, 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 okay. Well, today's a good day for you then. All right, so teachers, this first, everyone is going to hop on board and do that as well. All right, any questions for my class? All right, here comes Brain Pop. <laughs> 